We're going to look at the geometries of molecules right now. The geometries can be predicted using a, a simple model called the valence shell electron pair repulsion model. We look at the number of bonds and non-bonding pairs around the central atom. Uh, we call these the Aries electron density. So we're going to have uh, areas of two, three, four, five, and six that we're concerned about. And that is um, the geometry associated with that number Aries electron density electron geometry, which is also what we get when we have all atoms attached on and no lone pairs, are the electron geometry. So for two areas electron density to get as far apart as possible and they uh, become a linear molecule. Mm, try it this way. So with two areas electron density, uh, we get a linear molecule. So the two atoms or two lone pairs are on opposite sides of the central atom. So the bond angle is going to be 180 degrees. And if we replace one of these atoms with a lone pair, we only have two atoms. Two atoms is always linear, but it doesn't have a lone pair. We need a central atom and two sides, of it, a fulcrum, to create a bond angle. So if we have three areas electron density, we get a, a planar triangle. So we call that trigonal planar, the bind angles are 120 degrees. If we have four areas, we get uh, what we call a tetrahedral structure, the bind angle is 109.5. So on this one, if we're to fill in the sides with a, a sheet, we'll end up with four identical sides. So it's a regular uh, four-sided polyhedron, or tetrahedral structure. With five areas electron density, we now have, if fill in size, we have a, a three-sided pyramid on the top and a three-sided pyramid on the bottom. We call this trigonal bipyramidal. And then with a six uh, areas electron density, we have a four-sided pyramid on top, four-sided pyramid on the bottom. We can also rotate this around so all the sides are identical. Uh, and this is an eight-sided structure, so it's an octahedral. On the trigonal bipyramidal, this is the only one where the atoms have different positions. We have two atoms that are directly apart from each other. These are the axial atoms. Then three atoms that form a triangle, a uh, planar triangle in the middle of that axial. Uh, so those are equatorial uh, atoms. So we have axial and equatorial atoms. So these are the electron geometries, so linear, trigonal, planar, bond angle 120, uh, tetrahedral bond angle 109.5, trigonal bipyramidal. Uh, we have three bond angles. We have 90 between the equatorial and axial, 120 between two equatorials, and 180 between two axials. Then octahedral, which bond angles of 90 degrees, and uh, if we go between opposite sides, we'll have 180 degrees, which we'll see on our derivations of that. So these are the electron geometries. The other geometries that we have are built off of these electron geometries by lone pairs, non-binding pairs. So non-binding pairs don't stick out of the atom as they're shown in this diagram, but that's a reasonable representation because these non-binding pairs occupy the space and prevent the atoms from getting any closer. In fact, the, since the electron is not pulled up toward a atom, the lone pair actually occupies more space and the other binding or the remaining binding angle gets smaller. So from the trigonal planar, we can have a, um, a lone pair on it and we'll end up with a three molecule system that is not linear, so it's a bent molecule. The bond angle is going to be based on 120 from the trigonal planar, so it's going to be a little bit less than that. So this should be a bent geometry, a bent geometry. 
from the tetrahedral, we can replace one atom with a lone pair. Now we have a low three-sided pyramid. We call this trigonal pyramidal, and the bond angle is going to be smaller than 109.5. And then if we have two lone pairs, we'll end up with three atoms that are not linear. So we have another bent geometry based on the 109.5, but it'll be smaller than that, so less than 109.5 for that geometry. When we have five areas of electron density, we have our trigonal bipyramidal. middle. Replacing one of these atoms with a lone, lone pair. If we do an axial, there'd be three 90 degree uh, bonds that it has. An equatorial only has two 90 degree bonds. So the lone pairs go on the equatorial positions. So when we replace one of these and tilt a little bit, it looks like a seesaw from a, a playground. Uh, so that's the name that we give it, seesaw. We have our 90 degrees, 120, and 180 degree bond angles. If we place another lone pair, so we have two lone pairs on it, uh, it also goes in an equatorial position. So we only have one equatorial position left, but now we have what looks to be a T. So we call it a T shape. We lost the 120 degree bond angle, we're just left with 90 and 180. Replacing the last equatorial with a lone pair, we'll end up with a linear structure. So we still have our five areas of electron density, three on the equatorial or lone pairs. So the three molecules just form a straight line. We have a linear molecule with a 180 degree bond angle. With six areas of electron density, we have our octahedral. We replace one of them with a lone pair, and it doesn't matter which one we replace, we can always spin it around to have a lone pair on the bottom. Now we have a square pyramid. So that's the geometry we call it, square pyramid. We have 90 degrees and 180 degrees for the bond angles. If we replace a second atom with a lone pair, the two lone pairs want to be away from each other, opposite each other. So now we're left with four atoms in a plane. They form a square. So now we have square planar um, geometry, molecular geometry. So let's go and do some of these. So for xenon tetrabromide, we count up our electrons. We have 18 pair. So we start putting our electrons but in the bonding pairs. So we use four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16. We use up, we fill up all the octets, but we still have two pair left over. So xenon is, uh, has D orbitals available to it, so we can just squeeze in these extra pair on the xenon. So we have four atoms and two lone pairs on the central atom. So four plus two is six. We're dealing with octahedral, but we have two lone pairs, so we have a square planar. So our electron geometry is um, our octahedral. And our molecular geometry is our square planar. Okay, let's do the triiodide ion. We count up our electrons, get 22 electrons. We have 11 pairs. Put a bond between the two atoms. We use up two. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We use up ten pairs. We have one more pair, but our, our tests are filled. So we're just going to squeeze that extra one onto the central iodine. So the central iodine has a D, D orbitals available to it. So we end up with three lone pairs and two atoms, a total of five areas of electron density. That would be our trigonal bipyramidal. But with three lone pairs, it comes out to be a linear. So our electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Our molecular. Is our linear. <coughs> okay. 
put in a bond angles here. So bond angles on a square planar, it's going to be 90 degrees and 180 degrees. On our linear, they're just 180 degrees. So on the next molecule, uh, formaldehyde, we have six pairs of electrons. We put in our bonding electrons. So we use up three pairs. We go four, five, six. We use up all our electrons. The octet is complete on carbon, but it's not complete on the, it's complete on the oxygen, but it's not complete on the carbon. So to complete on the carbon, we're going to steal the pair, make a double bond. So now the carbon and oxygen are both complete. The carbon has three atoms attached, no lone pairs. Three atoms is trigonal planar. So this would be both electron and molecular geometry. And bond angle will be 120 degrees. Another one, phosphorus pentachloride. We have 20 pairs of electrons. All the chlorines are going right on the central atom. Um, the phosphorus is allowed to have an expanded octet since it is a period three element. We put in our bonding electrons and um, I don't know. Check to see how many electrons I need by counting by eight. So each chlorine takes eight. So eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. So I know I can just fill this all up and I will use up all my electrons. So use up 40 electrons. I have um, complete octets on the chlorine and an expanded octet on the Phosphorus. So phosphorus has five atoms, no lone pairs. So I have trigonal bipyramidal. And again, when there's no lone pairs on the central atom, electron and molecular geometries are the same. So let's do a couple more of these. So sulfur trioxide, we have 24 electrons, 12 pair. So 8, 16, 24. And I'm going to be able to fill up the octets with all the oxygens. And that leaves the sulfur with a uh, incomplete octet. So I reach across, steal one pair, and make a double bond. But if I check the formal charges on this, I'll see I have a minus one and a minus one and a plus two. So I can make this better. And I make this better by Stealing a pair, making a double bond. I'll turn the sulfur into a plus one now. I can still get rid of this one. We can do this because sulfur is period three, has the D orbitals available to use for bonding. So I use that and I make another double bond. And now all the formal charges are going to be zero. This is the preferred structure. So the sulfur has three atoms attached, no one pairs. We're dealing with trigonal planar geometry. Again, the electron and molecular are identical at trigonal planar. This is a 120 degree bond angle. So PoCl3, we have 
32 electrons, 16 pair, 8, 16, 24, 32. I'm going to fill up all these atoms with the lone pairs. And I know from experience that oxygen with a single bond is a negative one formal charge. So six valence electrons and six dots and one dash is a negative one. Phosphorus is five valence electrons and zero dots and four dashes is a plus one. So we can make this better by moving a pair from the oxygen into the bond, making a double bond. Now our formal charges are all zero. We have four atoms, no one pairs, so we have a tetrahedral geometry. Electron and molecular are the same. Bond angle of, of 109.5. So ozone, we have 18 electrons, nine pair. We put in our bonding pair. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I use up all my electrons. The two end electrons have a full octet. The middle one does not. Let me just put this on top. So I'm going to steal a pair, make a double bond. And the formal charges on this, this double bond is going to be, I'll do formal charges after it. So first let's uh, look at geometry. We have uh, uh, the central atom has two atoms and lone pairs with so three atoms, uh, three areas electron density that's a trigonal planar, but one of them is a lone pair. So we have a bent molecule. So trigonal planar electron geometry, bent molecular, bond angle of 120 degrees or less than 120 degrees. When we do our formal charge, six balanced electrons minus six dots and just one dash gives us a negative one. Six balanced electrons minus two dots minus three dashes gives us a plus one. Six balanced electrons minus four dots minus two dashes gives us zero. So we have a, a charge separation of this, but the oxygen is a period two element. So we cannot make a double bond uh, there to get rid of that charge separation because that would exceed the octet on the oxygen. Oxygen does not have D orbitals to use, so it cannot ever exceed the octet. So we cannot change this at all. Um, But we do have a resonance structure here, so let me just show the resonance structure also. So the double bond will resonate from side to side. And that negative charge will resonate also. So the central atom will remain positive, but the negative will be spread out between the two sides of the molecule. So for carbon dioxide, we have 16 electrons, eight pair. So we put in our Bonding pairs. And I got eight, 16. I've used up my 16 electrons, but I didn't fill the octet on the carbon. So I can steal a pair, make a double bond that gives me six on the carbon, steal another pair, make a second bond, and I eight on carbon. And uh, we could draw this in other ways. 
Um, we reached across, we could have grabbed two pair from one atom or from the opposite atom. So we have three structures. They all both only have two atoms attached. Two atoms no lone pairs means that we have a linear. So our electron and electron are both linear bond an angle of 120 degrees. But if we look at the structures a little bit more, the carbon is going to have a zero form charge all times. So it each has four bonds, so four valence electrons minus zero dots minus four dashes gives us zero for the carbon. Double bonded oxygens we found was zero. The single bond were a negative one. And the triple bond, this would be a six valence electrons minus two dots minus three dashes, it gives us a plus one. So the top and bottom had charge separation, the middle one doesn't. So the middle one is the best one, best form of charge structure. And if we average the top and the bottom, the left atom will be oscillating between, between negative and positive, the average is zero. The right one, same thing. So the best form of charge structure is also the best average that we get from these structures.